So good afternoon, everyone. This is Brian Lin. I'm an assistant research scientist in Omtree's Human Factors Group. So for the presentation today, I'd like to um, share with you ab about some findings we had uh, from the you know, mining the naturalistic driving data and validating through the computer simulation and also the demonstration uh, at M-City test facilities. So the topic today, we focus on the modeling on the automated vehicles lane chain decision making. And we focus on the weaving sections of the freeway ramps. So I appreciate uh, CCAD's funding support for this uh, fantastic work. So we'll like to, um, besides CCAD, we also like to thank um, M-City for supporting the test facility and the automated vehicles. So we can uh, finish this project in a perfect shape. So for the presentation today, I would like to uh, first intro introduce some backgrounds, objectives, and then share with you the, what the method we have applied and some results, also the conclusion and future work. So if you see the three pictures on the right, so these are basically the three you know, main topic we would like to cover in the presentation today. So first we would like to understand what does, um, what is the, the weaving section and what drivers decision making, why it's important in the weaving section. And then the next, the second picture shows that the computer simulation we ran with the Simulink. And then we further tested um, to have create a demonstra demonstration scenario in the M-City uh, test facility with the real uh, automated vehicle. So before we start um, digging to our, the, you know, sharing the findings in our in this uh, study. So we'll first like to, um, I'll go back to the previous page. So um, before we talk more about uh, this study, I would like to share with you a, a video about the weaving sections and how, you know, drivers will interact with the other vehicles in the weaving section. The Weaver crossover lane requires a driver's full attention because vehicles are slowing down to exit the highway while other vehicles are speeding up to enter. It's important to control your speed and the timing of your lane change to safely merge with other traffic in this area. To enter traffic in a weave or crossover lane, look for entry space in traffic and accelerate to traffic speed. Shoulder check to look for space to enter traffic again, yield to vehicles exiting the highway, and then change lanes when safe. Here's the traffic in a weave or crossover lane, use extreme caution. Check mirrors and shoulder check to look for exit space, adjust speed, then change lanes when safe. Okay, so I think now you got the idea what the, you know, the questions we're dealing with today. And as you see in the animation, it shows, you know, in, in the real world, the length of the weaving section is that, you know, that it's varied. So it could be very long, it could be very short. So a driver has to respond to and uh, the other vehicles maneuver in the, in the limited length of the weaving sections. So that's why as a safety impact on the freeway ramps, well, the weaving section, the site is, has more crashes than any other segments of the highway. And as I just mentioned, the driver needs to engage um, with multiple tasks in a very limited time. And especially it depends on how fast they drove. And uh, it could be they, they need to, you know, process multiple tasks within only like five to 10 seconds. And then, um, they, and also they need to keep the driving environment safe. So from the uh, previous literature, mentioned about the, um, the factors of the safety impact. So we want to care about the ramp design, which is uh, in this study, we, we um, especially focus on the weaving sections. That's a very special design on the, on the, as the uh, regular ramp. And we also need to care about the vehicle dynamic. The speed here uh, includes the drive, uh, well, the whole Eagle vehicle speed and also the other road user speed. So as uh, the animation just mentioned, you have to control your speed um, in a good way and interact with the other road users and either speed up or slow down to uh, before you merge into the target lane. 
So, so far, no study had, a conduct, had conducted lane change event-based analysis to understand human driver's lane change decision. Here, we, folk, we want to, you know, um, we want to emphasize the human driver's lane change decision. The re reason is um, when we try to develop the autom autonomous vehicles, um, autonomous vehicle features, well, understanding the human driver behavior is important since we want to make sure the maneuver and all the decision-making from the automated vehicles will meet the, the uh, expectation of the human drivers. And so human driver will not feel confused that why the, the vehicle, you know, perform this way. So they may want to, you know, override or, you know, feel very confused, feel confused about what the vehicle is doing. So, so far, Tesla Autopilot, they offer, they offer the automated um, lane chain capacity, capability, and GM Super Cruise has that as well. But it's unknown if their algorithms or models will refer to human driver's behavior. So in this study, we further like to tap, you know, create from the bottom up, like the bottom up, we started from the data and we validate the data in the simulation environment. And then we create, we further implement such models into the, um, in the real world on the task track and to see how that works. So there are four objectives and which are the four major tasks in this study. So first we need to identify the surrounding vehicle's position and relative speeds using the, or the naturalistic data we have. And then we'll pre develop the models for the weaving decision. So here we focus on the decision itself. So the simply said, it's going to be a, for, for a go or a no go. So the weaving decision, they want to merge to the target lane or stay the, in the original. But in other words, if they stay in the original lane, you know, before they, uh, before the weaving section has been run out and they will miss this exit or entrance. And with the developed models, we further tested with the computer simulations. So I'll share in this presentation today, I'll share with you uh, some 3D simulation we created using the Simulink and also with some, um, with some performance measures to see how that works in the simulation. And then we further implement that in the um, weaving section at M-City test facilities. So, for, before we um, extracted the data from the naturalistic database, we first need to select the, the weaving sections, the, the candidate of the weaving section. So totally we selected uh, 53 weaving sections in Southeastern Michigan. And he, here are the, um, the pictures as the typical one on uh, Interstate 96 around the Metro Detroit area. So you can, from um, in this, in the picture on the top, you can see it's it's kind of a relatively long uh, weaving section. So it's about like 800 meters to um, 1,000 meters, but it's not always this long. So if you see the distribution on the rise in the histogram, you will see some of these are shorter than 200 meters. And most of them are between 200 and 400 meters. And some, you know, but, you know, most of that will be, um, has the length between 200 and 600. So in other words, if you drive with a speed of, um, let's say 75 miles per hour, and then you will, and if the uh, weaving section is about 300 meters, you will run out the weaving section within 10 seconds. So you don't have much time to respond and you don't have much time to make the decision. So I have to, you know, with the, the assist, from the um, automated vehicles that will uh, give you some, you know, that, that's a very important assistant for the human drivers. So next I would like to talk about the naturalistic data and some of the attendants um, were familiar with this data sets we have been used, widely used in Umtri uh, researchers. So totally um, in this IBVS data sets, we have 108 drivers adult drivers. So evenly distributed in three age groups and collected in between 2008 and 2009. So for each subject, the data collection period is about two weeks. And for the um, for each vehicle, uh, the, 
the drivers on for the, during the two weeks. Uh, we have the we have six radars, well, seven radar sensors installed, um, you know, facing to different angles and to the um, to the external world. So if you see the plots on the uh, bottom right corner, so the each um, each orange triangles means the, the the field of view of the short range radar sensors. It covers um, 150 degrees field of view and 30 meters uh, of the range. So we rely on those radar sensors to tell us who is driving next to the Eagle vehicle and how fast they're driving and also what they're doing next. So about the variables we extracted from the database, I will not um, walk through that. I listed some examples here. And the more important is the additional variables listed in the table at the bottom. So these variables were kind of what we extracted, um, we, we processed from the extracted data and also from the map. So the first, well, the first two, the first three uh, variables are very important and I will share with your findings in um, later the, the presentation. So it is about the distance to the weaving section, starting point and ending point. And also we convert that these two numbers into a merging point as a percentage or uh, as a ratio. So for example, if we have uh, eight, 800 length of the weaving section at 800 meters, and if the driver decided to merge um, onto the, at, you know, 400 meters after the starting point, and the merging point will be 0.5. And the distance to the weaving section starting point will be 400 meter and 400, another 400 meter to the ending point. So this is important since we would like to know at what, at what position the driver started to merge. And, you know, sometimes it may not be related to safety, but related to they have to. Otherwise, they will miss this exit or entrance. And on the other hand, we would like to um, and we also need the, you know, the, the association with the other uh, vehicles. So here we use the POV, which is the uh, private owned vehicles as the abbrevi abbreviation. So we need the longitudinal distance to that lateral distance and also the range weight. So um, these three are basically what we want to know where the other vehicle is and what they're doing. Okay, so um, here I listed several characteristics when we, you know, when we analyze the data set from the naturalistic data. And we found something that's, this is a very um, different scenarios as we see from the, um, you know, discretionary lane changes or the lane changes in different areas on the highway. So first, the most important thing, the driver must make a lane change. It's a must for, and all of the driver, including you and me, we will, we will select to do so. Even it's a very risky situation. If we get very close, you know, we have a, you know, um, we have a very large range rate to the other road users but we will try our best to make this lane change and go to our target lane. And the other thing is the driver will have multiple events. Well, each driver will have multiple events and these events were correlated to within the subject. So that's from the data side, you know, some subject they may have one event and some subjects may have multiple or more than 10. So we will have to treat uh, the data from each driver as the as a rel correlated to each other. So, and we also found that the time elapsed played an important role to the lane change decision. So, based on um, these characteristics of the lane changes, we selected. Um, originally, we proposed to use some machine learning methods, but after that, we found that. Um, it was not very, um, you know, appropriate of using that because these reason because of these reasons, and the, the critic um, and also the critical factors and the COVID covariates were associated with the time. So in other words, as the time being, the 
um, that's, for example, as time being, the merging position will be more and more important. Since the longer you stay in the eagle lane, the shorter um, weaving section to the end of, shorter distance to the end of a weaving section you will have. So you have to, you know, this factor will become more and more critical as time. And so we have to use some other techniques to analyze the data and to, to do the modeling. And also uh, from the naturalist data, it's very difficult and very rare cases as the countermeasures, like the abort of the, um, abort, abort of the lane change. As I mentioned, all of the drivers, they will try to do their best to merge onto the highway or to take the exit. So here's the method we apply um, to you know, replace the machine learning methods. So it's a survival analysis. It's being widely used uh, in the medical informatics, engineering, employment, economics, and you know, the, they try to estimate a lifetime uh, from the certain of the certain population, different conditions. So in other words, if we try to under estimate how long um, this machine can can work and before it's it's broke it's been broken. So you can start, you know, start to estimate the lifetime from this, you know, this the start of this working, and then estimate at maybe three months after uh, it has the performance lower than what's lower than 50%. And after another three months, it dropped to 25%, and another three months it died. So use the, this kind of um, is a survival analysis to, to make sure to observe at what time the um, the events will occur and before that um, the all of the other events will re well, well the remain the events will remain as it was and then at a single specific time it died or we say the event occurred so in this study um, well you should see in um, the like the illustration in the middle. So in this study, our live event is just like, you know, the drivers stay in the Eagle Lane. So they stay for us for some time. And once the time or the critical factors meet some um, the requirements or the criteria, they will start to engage a lane change, which we call the dead events. So they will live, they will live, 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 live and die. They will remain, 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 remain and change lanes. So this is the uh, basic concept of what we what we have used, and we follow um, the hazard ratio functions we listed here. So we kind of you know change the apply that concept from the hazard to the lane change, from hazard ratio to the lane change ratio. So we selected um, these are the final variables we selected from the data extracted from the uh, naturalistic data. So if you um, can, if you remember the previous few slides, we listed more than these variables. The reason we selected those were kind of uh, that many of the variables we extracted were correlated to each other. For example, the longitudinal speed will be correlated to the longitudinal acceleration. And the lateral speed will be correlated to the lateral offset. So we tried to, um, we, we selected those variables which are more representative and also easily to extract it, to extract from the database and no further processing needed. So that's in, in the end, um, we selected six variables. Three of those are, uh, two of those are about the Eagle vehicles um, dynamic. One is about the merging point where the um, lane change occurred in the weaving section. And three of those are about the, uh, the other vehicle, the, the, well, the other road users. So with the uh, survival analysis, we can help, um, we can come up with the lane change ratio to say, you know, compared to the non-lane change case, cases, at what ratio of, the, uh, of this function the driver will start to engage a lane change, which is the HT on the top of the equation. 
So this is kind of a um, classification model without using the you know typical uh, logistic regression or machine learning, but we apply the um, survival analysis to classify the lane change or um, non-lane change <laughs> events. So here's the first model uh, we created when the driver, you know, for the scenarios of taking an exit. So among those six variables, with the um, Cox regression we ran for the survival analysis, we come up with the coefficients and the significance of each variables. And then we further select those as the significant ones. So we selected four out of the six, and we, we come up with the final coefficients, which are the beta um, as we share in the hazard function. So we use that coefficient can help us to generate the, uh, the lane change ratio numbers. And we use such numbers compared to the threshold we created from the classification models that can help us to, under, to classify if the lane change is predicted. Well, if the actual lane change will, has been predicted as a go or no go. So um, in the table at the, um, at the, the bottom, it shows the, well, total we have 412 observations to see if for the go or no go. And we can classify, you know, we have the sensitivity, which is true positive rates. Um, the true positive rates means you, it's actually, there is a lane change and your model classified it as a true lane change. So it's a, just like a hit. So the sensitivity is, um, is 0.87, which is good. And the true negative rate that you correctly um, correctly classify those non-lane change cases when then we can identify 0.8 um, of the like 80% of all the events. And the accuracy is about 0.81. So as the you know sadistic models, it's kind of a convincing results. And you know, the for the uh, ROC curve shown on the bottom right, we have the AUC more than 0.8, uh, which is well, the area under the curve. So, which means we can um, explain more than 80% of, um, of the results from, from this, um, this model. So this is model for taking an exit. So again, the driver, uh, we use the Eagle vehicle speed, the, Eagle ve the lateral speed when they um, engage the lane change and the merging position as the ratio and the range rate to the other vehicle as the predictors to, um, to predict if the driver will engage a lane change or not. So in the next page, I, there is a, this is the other model, but we apply the same methods. Uh, it's a, it's a, when entering the highway. So it's kind of like, you know, we, we swap the position of the, of the two vehicles. So we try to enter the highway and accelerate and merge onto the highway and interact with the, the road users originally on the highway. So um, for the survival analysis that shows the coefficients and the significance of, the, of these variables. So we selected the, significant, the three significant ones, significant ones out of the six. So here notice that the speed is not a significant factor anymore, but the lateral speed uh, merging position and lateral range remains. And the range rate is not significant um, as well, but was been, it's been replaced by the lateral range. But using the same method, we apply to the classification models, and we have total observation of 789, and that tells us um, uh, then apply the this to create in this confusion matrix that shows the sensitivity and specificity of the classification and accuracy is about 8.81. Uh, so we get kind of a similar accuracy um, for the, uh, as compared to the, the model of taking the exit. And, but the when prediction for the taking the exit has more higher sensitivity to predict the true positive cases. But they both models can explain more than 80% of the events we extracted. So 
here are the models we created um, in the lab. So another jump to another topic with the results from the lab, what are we supposed to do? There is a gap between we want to apply the result from the lab to either the real world or a test track. So here we ran some uh, computer simulation to make sure it works. And even you know, from the modeling parts, as the computational part, we know, you know from the, in the survival analysis, we know it works. But we don't know if that works. And you know, when we try to um, really apply with some vehicle dynamic parameters in the Simulink and to see how, we don't know if that works in uh, the simulation. So here we ran a small, um, not small, but some tests with the different combinations of the AV speed and POV speed. And for each combination, we, simul we simulated uh, 100 times and, to, and then we collected the performance measures to see, um, and I'll share with you what performance measures we collected afterwards. And so here I want to emphasize what we try to model is the AV decision. So we don't really, in this study, we don't really care that much about how what the dynamic vehicle move toward the target lane. We just want to know if the AV select to select to go or no go. And to simplify the scenario, we have the um, the POV to merge at the middle of the weaving section. And doesn't matter what the AV was doing, the POV will just merge onto the high, will, will just do what it needs to do, either onto the highway or um, take the off ramp. So we'd like to, with this setting, we'll like to see what the AV will respond to with based on the model we created. So here's the, um, some, the videos I created. So the first one is the, um, this the simulation is, it's a 3D environment in the M-City, um, for the M-City facility. And um, the AV will perform with uh, like about 30, 33 miles per hour. And we'll, you will, in this video, you will see another vehicle merging from the, um, on the ramp. And the, um, the weaving section is just ahead of the white vehicle, which is the Eagle vehicle. So now we see in this case, both vehicles, um, they, they have the same speed. I, I put it that, I, you know, that's a default setting we have. And it's very close, you know, when the, the, um, the yellow vehicle try to merge on the highway and based on our model, the vehicle selected to, to engage the lane change. And you can see it's a very close distance. It's almost, you know, their rear and front bumpers almost touch to each other. But in our case, it's selected to make this lane change. So that's an interesting part since this is what the human drivers will do in the real world. They, even they're, you're driving parallel with the other vehicles, but I have to get, I have to, you know, take this exit or I will take another three, another 10 minutes for the other exit. So I will, I will go, even I stay very, very close to the, the other, the, the other road users. So this is, um, this tells us some, you know, this, uh, the Y vehicle selected to merge onto the highway at about, let's say, um, about like first 40% of the, of the uh, merging, of, of the waiting sections. Otherwise, if they wait any longer, they may miss the, um, they may miss the, the, this accident. And the other example is if we try to increase the drive um, the AV speed to 30, 30 meters per second, which is 67 miles per hour, then we apply the same speed to the POV and let's see what happened to the simulation. So in, in this simulation, you can see the Eagle vehicle select not to make the lane change. So this is, and again, in this study, we try to analyze, well, we try to model the decisions, but you may ask why not the Eagle vehicle slow down? 
to create more no more rooms to the you know merging vehicle then you can take then you can take off so i would say that's a that's a good point and we put that as the next phase since well next phase of the study since we really like to you know split if if the driver you know after the driver make the decisions for an OGO, what they will do next they were are they going to um accommodate to a different strategy of their of their maneuver or they will just stay on the decision um, they just made and miss the um miss the exit or the entrance i would definitely i i'm willing to bet everyone will take the 401 but um we, we don't know since we um and again in the naturalistic data set we have there's very rarely cases that a driver select not to take this, take the exit or the entrance through the weaving sections. So this kind of a limitation so far, but I'll put that in the future work if we can have more on the other naturalistic data sets that can help us to, you know, to analyze after the decision making um, has been made, what a driver will do to you know, update the situations they just faced, and then they may change their decisions afterwards. So with these, um, the 3D simulations, we try to understand um, what the, the model works, how the model works. We, we created four um, performance measures. So we'd like to see first, to see if they missed any exit or entrance. And then if they make the, if they have made a lane chain decision, what was the probability of collision under different speed combinations? So again, this study will test this, it's going to model the decision making. It's not collision free. So, and that's why we want to run in a computer simulation first, before we can go to uh, the MCD or even higher speed environments. So, and then the third one was the minimums, minimum gap between the, um, the two vehicles in the weaving section. As I just shared with you in the simulation, you see um, in the weaving section and at M city, the weaving section has only 80 meters, which is very, very, very short. If you like, if you drive on like a, um, if you simulate it with a 70, 70 miles per hour speed and you will go over that, and, well, you will pass that in three or four seconds. So I don't think anybody can do any like change in like in three or four seconds. So that's kind of a lot of another limitation. So, but we simulate that in, you know, we want to do that in M City since it's part of the scope that we want to test in at M City and you know at, using a using a true AV. So the last one is the lateral speed when engaging a lane change. So this one is interesting as well. Like, so if, you know, if the driver started to merge to the exit or the end or the highway too late or too close to the end of the hut, to the end of the, um, the weaving section, they have to have a very, they have had a very, like a huge lateral speed before they run into the, the fork, right? So, and even, we just like to know with that if they make the decision. Okay, I want to go. I want. I want to take this exit. What a lateral speed they will like to. They will like to use, uh, depending on what speed combination they have with you know between the AV and the um, and the other rule users. So the first one about a probability of missing an exit. Um, it might be a little bit tiny, but I don't want, I don't need you to read through the numbers here. Just take a quick look at um, the, the red numbers. So you see when the driver, when the AV speed is 70, 75 miles per hour and the POV, and POV it's about, um, you will see many, in, in many scenarios, um, the probability of missing an exit or entrance will be very high or even close, e even just one. So in this case, in this settings, the driver will, will definitely miss the, miss the exit or entrance. But again, this is the simulation at M-City. So 
at a 75 miles per hour, you have only three seconds, four seconds the most to merge and do it very, very easily. And to, you know, any tiny, you know, adjustment of your speed of the, any tiny adjustment of the speed of the AV and the POV will affect the results. So that's why we ran this simulation for one, like a hundred times. It can be more, but a hundred times is good enough. And then we see, you know, especially when the AV is, you know, 75 miles per hour, in many cases, you'll see the driver will just miss the exit and entrance. Well, sorry, the, the, um, the, the exit. The interesting thing is from the model for the entering, um, all the simulated scenario had to go. So different to the, um, the exit scenarios here, um, we found that's interesting that which means any the, the driver will, mer will will get onto the highway anyways, so um, it's not they, they will miss they will not miss any entrance they will just get on the highway and some collisions might occur, and but that's our our observa observation from the naturalistic naturalistic data um, saying the driver was actually expecting the re you know the response of the other the of the other road users on the highway. And if you remember the significant factors we um, created from the survival analysis for the um, for entering the highway scenario, there is no longitudinal variables. We found the lateral speed, we found the lateral position, well, lateral distance to the POV and the position of the merging point. So there is no longitudinal, um, significant longitudinal variables, which means, which, well, I think that that, that implied the driver tried to uh, take the entrance onto the highway, expect the, you know, some longitudinal control from the, um, the, the road users originally on the highway, either to give the way to them by slowing down or passing them quickly, but they will, since, we will run out the we will run out this the weaving section very quickly, very soon, especially with the high speed of the AV. So the driver will intend to, you know, merge anyways. So this is the, the first um, performance measure. And the second one, um, you just a lot of numbers here are zero, which means no collision. But if, if you see the numbers on the diagonal, and when the, the faster the driver, the faster the AV drove, um, the higher probability the collision will be. So that, that makes sense since, um, so for example, if we just drive at 20 miles per hour with the same speed of the, uh, the, the POV, the collision probability has only like 0.4. So, which means you have more room to adjust your decision. You have one more room to, you know, or more room or more time to make to before you make the final decision. So that lower the probability of collisions. And in the AV, when you increase the, the AV driving faster and faster, you have only three, four, five seconds, and there is no way you can um make the lane change without a collision otherwise stay on where you are and select no go so the next slides about the minimum gap is kind of a something related to the previous one as the collision um as the collision rate the probability of the collision so if you see on the diagonal um this the the minimum gap are very short Two, three sec, two or three meters. Some, some of the, some of those even just one. So it's kind of a, you know, and that's the computer simulation. And I don't know what what's going to happen in the real world. So which which means, if we for this, with this model, if the driver select, you know, stay with the same speed as the POV, there's a very, there's a, you know very high probability they will have some collision into each other and they will have the minimum gap will be very very short 
So even some of those you see like 10 meters, 11 meters, but at high speed, it's very small. And for we also estimate the um, the lateral speed when they change lanes. So it met our um, expectation that the faster the AV, the faster the AV has, um, the lateral speed it needs to apply when they try to engage the lane change. Otherwise, they may you know since they have shorter time, so they need to move faster laterally. If, um, in order not to run into the fork of the of the weaving section. So about the summary of this um, the the simulation, we found that you know the model actually well did not work that well in the low speed scenarios, since well you you find you see in our in those um, the matrix I just shared with you, the low speed scenarios many of those okay. There is no collision, and they will just go anyway. But you will see some. Um, well, sorry, you'll have a high probability of making a decision of of a go. But you also have some probability to have the collision with the POV. And again, the lane change decision was made even with a potential collision occurred. So the reason is when we try to model the well. First, it might not make that much sense if you keep them at a lower speed on the highway. Very, very rare cases. So it makes sense that the prediction for the low speed scenario is not that good. And on the other hand, um, for the naturalistic database we extracted and analyzed, um, there's rarely low speed scenarios, even for the entering events. So in other words, when reaching, you know, the when reaching the starting points of a weaving section, most of the driver had already speed up from, you know, and stay at the not exactly the same as a speed limit on the highway, but close to. So we have more cases on the moderate speed or higher speed ones. And as I just mentioned, to end. To enter a highway, we found no, um, we found no, well, in other words, all the events, all the prediction of the events has a go. So the driver would, will make a lane change under any kinds of a speed simulation, or any kind of a speed combinations. So our uh, explanation is that there was no significant predictors on the longitudinal direction, and the driver might expect the POV to give the way. So they would just select to merge and let the other road users to avoid the collision. But in this simulation, the POV just follow the preset routes. So there is no collision can be avoided by the POV itself. And some lane change had a very short minimum gap. And, you know, which is not usually engaged by the AV, but very possible to see from the many of the human drivers. On the road, you see it every day. So the last part of that, we try to um, the AV, we try to implement these models into a AV platform. So I will, um, I don't need to focus more about too much about the technical part, but in short, we try to we create the like a ROS node to control uh, to create uh, um, to you know serve as the ghost vehicle. So it's, since it's not a collision free model yet, so we cannot, uh, or we were not allowed to, before we, before the, you know, complete of this project, we are not allowed to run the study with two vehicles. So we can only do that with one AV, but I can create the ghost vehicle to interact with the AV to see how that models works. So, that ghost vehicle will send um, will send a command. Well, it has the, it calculated the it runs the model in this ghost in this ghost vehicle, and then it will send a command, the throttle and brake steering angle command to the AV to ask the AV to do something, and the AV will send its speed and position back to the ghost vehicle 
So the ghost vehicle knows where the AV is, and you know the, the model can calculate and send back to the AV. For now, you need to make some steering because because this is the command that want the AV to make the lane change. So that's a simple concept of that. So here's the demonstration. Um, I, like we create the, we, we use this platform, we um, create a video. That's kind of a concept of the augmented reality, but it's uh, just easier for you to understand. There is no, and in the, in the big, um, in the big screen, there is only Davy on the field, no other vehicles. But we um, we implement the well. We import the variables from the ROS nodes to the Simulink, and we synchronize these two videos. So we just pretend there is a um, a POV, a yellow colored POV, try to merge onto the highway, and the um, the AV itself is going to it stay now it stays on the highways tries to merge to the exit so this is um after the synchronization this is how the, the model works and it's not a very um, urgent event so you see now the the pov is probably at the center at the middle of the weaving section now across the border the main boundary and maybe select to to move so again um we here we try to control the lane change decisions so you can see like you know after the lane, lane change decision has been made the AV has a, like a sharp turn to the right so it's not perfect yet but right now our goal is to try to to make this you see that's a sharp turn to the right and back so it's not the you know smoothly lane changes to the um to the exit but i think it's our goal is to you know Make sure the decision decision model works, and so again, some of the the model works in some of the situations, but not all of these. Especially like I mentioned, the high speed ones didn't work, and the other reason is MCD doesn't support the high you know high speed scenario, and the um, the AD cannot run too fast. It has to be lower than like three miles per hour, and and the, the leading section at M City is very, uh, it's relatively short, like 80 meters long, as I mentioned. So, but here that shows um, some evidence that we can successfully, you know, apply or in, implement our computational models, and we cross the gap between from the data to um, the real world that we can really apply our models into a true AV. So now it's just like a lane change models, but we can do that um, for all the other decision makings and even the maneuver models we have in the future. So by the conclusion, um, you know, in this study, we have identified, identified the critical factors on the weaving decisions and based on the naturalistic data. And we know the remaining distance to the end of the, we the weaving section played a very important role comparing to the other uh, factors. So in perform better, the current model performed better on the moderate speed scenarios, since we don't have much data for the low speed scenarios. And the simulation we ran at MCD um, is not a like a appropriate environment for high speed scenarios. So that's, but for the moderate speed scenarios, it works well. And we can successfully implement, implement the, um, the human driver models to the AV on the test track. But the next thing we need to do is to validate that. So as I share in the, in the video, it's just a demonstration. So we did not collect the data on that. We just want to see if that works. So in, in the future, we we'll like to use other naturalistic driving data, data sets, and you know, with a longer, uh, longer range, wider range of the speed uh, profiles, and then we also like to see if um, we are very keen to see if this kind of study can be approved for human subjects running. So one of the human, you know, human subject as the driver, as a passenger in the front or back or back seat, 
and ACM will be the um, more ideal environment for us to apply the high speed driving environments. So thank you. And also like to appreciate um, the funding support from CCAT, the support from M-City for the test facility and the automated vehicle and Toyota CSRC just um, serve as the, um, the, the champion of this project. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Uh, we have some time for questions. Um, so the first one is, was this analysis related to time or fraction of time available? Um, so, well, the question is, do I need to repeat it? Um, yeah, that would be great. Okay. So the question is this, the, the analysis was associated with the time or the time fraction. So it's, so yes. Um, so that, that's why, you know, we selected the survival analysis than the machine learning analysis. Since, you know, the time plays an important role and also um, the time was related to the merging point. In other words, the longer you stay in the, the weaving area before you make the lane change, the shorter distance you will have before you um, run, before you approach the end of the weaving section. So the data point we collected were, was actually um, from, for a five second window from the, um, started from the, um, the, the, the merge of the, the, well, started from the lane change and trace back for five seconds. So we'd like to see during that five seconds. So we have um, no go for five, for four seconds and a go for at the last second. So that help us to create the classification models. Okay, so from a time perspective, the analysis was normalized to like available time. That was just a follow up. Yeah. So. Um, so well, the, the question is, as time has been normalized to the, um, has the available time has been normalized. So um, basically we try to, you know, we, we try, we, we make, we make it consistent for the, everybody's, you know, the time before the lane change. So, you know, since some of the, some of the drivers, they may take longer time, well, they may take longer time after they enter the weaving sections. But um, with, with the different time, numbers of time stamps, sometimes we will bias the, you know, the sample we have. So we try to make it consistent across the subjects. Since we have um, 53, we have 53 um, weaving sections. So we get enough data that's, so we just, we don't need to, we don't need to have a wide, very wide time window. Uh, the next question is, was the term indicator included in perceiving the POV's intentions? If not, is that something that would be considered in future work? Um, no. So it's kind of a, well, to identify the, so if you, I, I guess you mean from the naturalistic data, can we identify if the PO, merging POV has initiated in turn signal? So, in this study, the answer is no. We don't. We don't query. That. We don't extract that data since that would be very time time consuming to watch all the video clips. And but I agree that's that could be a, a good point. And but I haven't. I don't know. I don't. Right now, I I don't have a very good way to you know or a more efficient way to um, identify the use of a turn signal of the other road users. But that could be a good um, you know predictor in the future. <laughs>